Welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to be finding out can you submerge an electric car battery and motor underwater without being damaged and I will find out the hard way so you don't have to. Now if you don't know who I am you may have seen a picture of my Zoe floating all over the news, social media. Actually where we live my wife parks in a place called Buxton where she works and the river burst its banks. It burst its banks for around about an hour, 60 minutes and water basically came flooding into the road and started to fill up. Now, the pictures you'll see will, will be pictures of the Zoe basically submerged up to just about this line. In fact, it's just there. You can see where the watermark is. So it's just basically above the grill. So high, but not, not particularly high. Unfortunately, um, some idiots decided to drive down the road and create, create wakes, which has uh, caused other problems with the Zoe. But before I get into that, what I'd like to ask you to do is go down below and click the subscribe button on, on this video and give it a thumbs up. This helps my channel grow. I do videos about electric cars every single week. And today I will be going into more detail on what happens with an electric car when it is submerged under quite a fair bit amount of water. Now, one of the things it does do is it gets very wet. <laughs> the one thing it doesn't do is stop working. Now, if you don't know a lot about electric cars, let me just tell you some of the major important parts on why they are better than petrol cars at surviving underwater. Number one, the battery that's underneath here is designed to be waterproof. It's designed to be submerged underwater and so is the motor and all the other electrical components are part, are part, which are part of the normal electric car. So anything that's to do with high voltage, 400 volts, is designed to be submerged and watertight for water. It's, it's designed to be submerged underwater. And why, you may ask? Well, let's just give you an example. Let's just say you have a tidal, terrible water that basically carries this Zoe down the road and it's an electric car and therefore there may be people, dogs, animals, fish in the water where this electric car is going past which are in water and if you didn't know water is a conductor of electricity so if it wasn't watertight and it wasn't safe the water would be electrified and all the fish, animals and people would die. So they are designed to be submerged and survive this amount of water. Now we've got the important parts about the battery and the 400 volt being completely protected from water. There is some limitations on this. So there's a battery vent valve inside the car and, and behind all, in all electric cars, there is a vent valve, which is a little sticky up piece in your battery. So pretty high up, it's that little lip inside the boot, inside your Renault Zoe. That is the battery vent valve. That can survive some water, it, it, I think it's IP67 uh, or it might be 66, that one, where the battery is 68. But I think that one is designed to be 67. So it's designed to survive some water in, uh, to get into it, but as in, it won't let water in, but it's not designed to be completely submerged for long periods of time. Look I don't have to worry about that. Even if I did, I would be technically in the time scale, but the water really at the back, the, wheel, the back of the car was slightly higher because the, the wheel was on top of the curb, lifting it up. So if you look at the back, the water level was around about here. So only, only sort of, not even at the top of the, the wheel, not even at the top of the wheel arch, so it's within the safe zone. Not only that, the water level on the interior was even lower than what it was on the outside. And I'm presuming that's to do with something, with the fact that the doors are technically sealed and most of the water is from people swooshing the waves, which are getting inside the cracks and pushing the water in. Because as soon as the water subsided, the drain holes and, and, the, and the bits of the rest of the Zoe just basically dissipated. Now my wife crawled into the car when the car, when the water was up, she crawled through the boot. I told her not to open the tools and basically let anything in. She crawled through the boot, which is obviously below, um, the water was well below that line. And she managed to get in, she managed to have a look at where the water was. Now, the only thing that really worried me, the only part of the 400 volt system that could potentially be at risk from the water is the main amp fuse, which is located underneath the driver's footwell on in the UK. Now I'm going to try and keep as much of the wind off this mic as I can because I've currently got a dehumidifier in the back of the car which I'll show you in a minute. But the main amp fuse is this big thing here which is protected by a ton of panels. First of all, this is on top of that and then there's the, the other piece that sits on top that clips in and applies extra pressure. Now, the first thing I did is I drove it back to work. 
First of all, there was no warning lights on the dash. The car went ready straight away. The automatic 12 volt system was all working. And if, if this comes up ready, that's telling you that it's performed all the safety checks and that there's no faults with any of the connections and the car is safe to drive, basically meaning there's no danger to life, to you or anything. The body parts are gonna be electrified, all the safety parameters and the testing was well within parameters of what the car considers safe. And it's a Zoe, so let's be honest, it's a little bit over the top on how safe it wants to be. Got back to work, I, there was water all pulled in here. I'll just show you actually. There's water all pulled down here. There was water pulled around this bit here. There was water all pulled around here. But when I opened this up, this rubber sleeve with this pressure on top and then the other pressure on top meant that there was zero water in here and this goes quite deep. There's, 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 I'll show you, it's easier. So if you look, there's, it goes right the way into there and there was no water down there and you can see it's as dry as, it's as, dry as a bone. So we know that the traction battery the motor and all the 400 volt system is fine. There is no errors on the dash. There is no water in the fuse. So basically at the moment, what we're looking at is just wet interior, which, which can be valeted, clean, dried out. Then I rang Will at DSG that I've done videos before, who's a Renault dealer. Got to speak to his EV mechanic and basically go over stuff that they've had on flooded cars before. So he basically told me to check the 12 amp fuse, which said, uh, sorry, the, the main amp fuse, which I checked, completely fine. He asked me how, 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 ugh, how high the water went. He says that should be well within tolerances where, where it went. Um, and then he basically asked me to check the one thing, the lowest failure point on one of these cars. And that's this bit here. Now this is, it, it's all white, all the fuses in here. And if you unclip that, I unclipped it all, checked for water, and he, basically these connector blocks where they all clip in, they were all dry. So no water ingress in them, the water hadn't been sucked up them. That's great. Um, had a bit of a feel, a bit of, the, a bit of dampness to the bottom of the cables, which run down the channel, down the side of the car to the back. But nothing in the blocks, nothing in the 12 volt system. So good sign. He, he basically said, if, if, as long as that's dry and you get that dry as soon as possible, it'll be fine. He said, if it's damp now and you dry it out, it should be okay. But he said, if it's already dry, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's not got up there. Now, the only tricky bit I found on drying on the Zoe is these, this padding here. This is the sound deadening. The problem with this bit of sound deadening, the only reason I've not removed this part is you have to take the entire dash out. Um, spoke to Will's EV mechanic and said, what have you done on uh, Clio's and Zoe's that have been water damaged like this in the past to dry this out? Do you take the dash out to get this out? And they went, no, it's far too much of a uh, technical job. He said, really, the reason why that's wet and the reason it's wet so high up is it's acted like a sponge and started to suck it up um, because it's such a foamy sort of rubbery pad thing. So he said, basically just levitate it with, with something, which I have, and he says, put the aircon on and dry it out. Well, I've got a dehumidifier, which is 10 times better than an aircon. Uh, the dehumidifier I've got is designed to basically dehumidify an entire showroom. And I've got it in the back of a Zoe boot, sucking all the water out of the Zoe. So at the moment in here, at the moment, it's very, very dry. I've cleaned, I've, I've had to re-wet some stuff to, to clean it. So I've been using a special solution that we have at the garage for cleaning uh, smells, cigarette smokes and sick. I mean, to be honest, the, the water doesn't smell because it's from a, from a fresh stream. So it's at, the water actually doesn't smell, but it's more of a precaution just in case there is any bacteria in there and there is any smells or amoebias uh, or anything like that. This here is the skin, the, 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 the fabric, which is in your Zoe. One thing that I've learned that I didn't know is uh, the carpet has plastic on the back of it. So I presume that is to stop water progressing through it, but obviously my water was coming through my sills underneath and lifting through, through the bottom of this. But yeah, if you do get your Zoe pretty wet, there is a lot of plastic sheeting uh, underneath the actual carpet. But yeah, that's, the, that's that. I've also taken out all the boot bits at the back, which are all sound deadened with uh, cushions at the back. These have all been taken out. The, the boot really, the only bit of the, uh, bit of the boot that had water in was the wheel well. And I think that's because it's come through the, the plungs at the bottom, that, 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 which are meant to drain water out. But obviously, they've just lifted a bit of water. So there was a, about that much water at the bottom, just a tiny, tiny drizzle where it's not been able to drain out. But the actual boot, in theory, was completely dry. I've just taken these out as a precaution, uh, mainly because the wife climbed through the back of the boot to get in the car and she basically splashed 
Uh, the, the side, I think she splashed some of the seats where she stood on to get over and climb over. Like I said, the hardest parts of the Zoe to get dry are the sound deadening pans. They are literally a sponge. They, I've been drying these out of the car for ages. I've obviously given them a, a, a wet clean as well after, but I can still squeeze the water out of them because they are just a sponge. But the main answer to the question is, does a Renault Zoe survive, electric, does an electric car survive being submerged underwater? And yes, it can, as long as it's not too deep. They are designed to survive some submerged underwater. So to any of the idiots and doubters that believe that electric cars aren't versatile and can't go anywhere, there's a petrol car, you're wrong. And here's another thing for people who are thinking that um, I'm crazy for not writing my car off. First of all, the insurance company have been reported, I've reported this to the insurance company, I will be keeping the car for at least 12 months to satisfy myself that there is nothing wrong with it uh, long term. I'm gonna take it up to a Renault dealer to have another check over it, and if there's anything wrong, I will be making a full claim. I've notified my insurance company because it, it is technically classed as a non-fault accident and you do need to report stuff like that. So that has been reported, so they do know about it. So I can claim about it six, seven, eight, 12 months in the future. So that has been notified. Yes, it will affect my premium. Uh, no, I, I do not care about having an extra 20, 30 quid added onto my premium because I've got a little bit of peace of mind. And I don't want to then, I don't want to put this, I was going to sell Laura Zoe in the next two, three months uh, to go towards getting some money towards a Model 3. But now I will keep it because I don't want someone to think that I've sold it just because it's, this has happened to it. If I thought that there was any possible true long-term damage to the car, trust me, I'd have asked the insurance company to write it off. Clean the carpets and give it a good dry and a shake off and it will usually work completely fine. If there's a fault, you'll know about it instantly. And this charges, I've plugged it in, it, it charges. I've driven it, it works fine. There is zero warning lights on the entire car. Renault, this is from me to you. This car, the Renault Zoe, is the greatest French electric ever. Not only is it an electric car, not only is it French, but it's a French electric car that works. Yes, the French made electrics that are working, fully working, everything. Is this the world's best built French car? Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this video. If you want to help support me on Patreon, please go and click the Patreon link down below. Please check out my other videos and consider becoming a subscriber. Thanks very much for watching this week's video. I hope that it's encouraged you to buy an electric car knowing that you can wade through water, you can even leave it in a puddle and it will survive because these cars are incredible.